good morning, everybody. And boy, oh boy, what a beautiful morning it is in the spectacular Appalachian Mountains. Today, we're going to explore a little spot between the Seneca State Forest and the Monongahela National Forest, both part of the massive Appalachian Mountain Range. Now, when I say Appalachia, or Appalachia, <laughs> what's the first thing that comes to mind? <laughs> Besides scorch bees, snally gosters, sheep squatches, and various other things I hope don't exist in the real world. <laughs> well, for me, it's awesome trails and spectacular mountain views and all manner of year-round mountain activities. So let me grab my gear and let's get to some real mountain hiking. Come on, Coyote, let's go! Coyote? Ugh. Come on! Oh gosh, Coyote, look at that! There's snow up in the mountains. I bet it's pretty cold up there. We should stop and get some supplies before we head up. This looks like a perfect place to get supplies. You know, all those scout hiking supplies like water and protein bars and stuff like that. Yeah, let's see what these guys have. Mmm, that does not smell like protein bars. <laughs> Coyote, I think we hit the jackpot. Oh, hi there. Hello, welcome. Oh, thank you. Everything is so great and perfect hiking supplies, I must say. So, um, if you don't mind, uh, can I, uh, can you fill that with hot chocolate? Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you. And I'll have one of everything. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, so good. <laughs> One frosted Christmas cookie for you, and a whole bag of bear claws for me. <laughs> Alright folks, now that we're all stocked up with essential survival treats, <laughs> um, let's head up the mountain and discover Snowshoe. And when it comes to mountains, West Virginia has the best the east side of the country has to offer. Well, heck, they wouldn't be called the Mountain State if they didn't. But when it comes to the mountains you can explore here in wild and wonderful West Virginia, one in particular stands out when it comes to year-round fun and adventure, and that would be Cheat Mountain, home to the awesome Snowshoe Resort, or as us wastelanders know it, our very own Top of the World. So let's get up there. What do you think, Coyote? Don't see much of this in the Mojave. <laughs> hey. Do you want to build a snow dweller? As we get closer to the summit, we're entering a true winter wonderland. I can only imagine what this place looks like at the holidays. At an elevation of 4,848 feet, it's quite a bit cooler up here and certainly a lot more slippery. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Scout approved Skechers hikers, don't fail me now! <laughs> We made it! All thanks to those bear claw, um, scout protein bars and hot chalk, uh, ridge. That was some good mineral water. Anyway, here we are at Snowshoe Mountain. Well, the main entrance to Snowshoe Mountain Resort, that is. The mountain is actually named Cheat Mountain, but the resort is named Snowshoe Mountain. Prior to becoming the world-class ski resort that Snowshoe is today, Cheap Mountain was a major area for logging back in the early days of the Civil War when Union troops stationed there began cutting timber using a steam-powered circular sawmill. Don't even think about it, Victoria Hornwright. <laughs> After the Civil War ended, word of the valuable native spruce timber spread and caught the attention of W.S. Dewing and Sons, who utilized the nearby Shaver's Fork and Cheat Rivers to float logs to their nearby lumber operations in Point Marion, Pennsylvania. As business grew, Dewing brought the first logging locomotive into the area. The operation was short-lived, and in 1899, Dewing sold the operation to the West Virginia Pulp and Paper Company, which would build a large mill in nearby Cass, West Virginia. 
What followed was a massive lumber operation that ran from 1905 to 1960, which reduced the spruce hardwood population from approximately 460,000 acres to a mere few hundred. When the lumber activity ceased in the early 1960s, the mountain was left fairly barren of trees. Fortunately, modern conservation efforts are currently underway to preserve and expand the population of red spruce, and those efforts have so far been quite successful. One unplanned outcome of the lumber operation was the creation of large tracts of cleared land that would make possible ideal downhill slopes for a potential skiing area. And that's precisely what was envisioned by Thomas Doc Brigham, a dentist from North Carolina and major skiing enthusiast when he first visited the mountain. Brigham had previously opened two other ski resorts, Sugar Mountain and Beach Mountain. In building the resort and naming the trails and lifts, Brigham and his crew paid homage to the mountain logging legacy and incorporated historical terms such as grab hammer, j-hook, ball hooter, and skidder. Two of the trails were named after types of gear-driven locomotives known as Shay's Revenge and Heisler Way. Two of the trails at Snowshoe, Cup Run, and Shay's Revenge sport impressive 1,500-foot vertical drops, the highest in the southeast and mid-Atlantic ranges. And speaking of Cup Run, it was designed by a triple gold medalist from the 1968 Winter Olympic Games, legendary skier Jean-Claude Killy. The development of the resort was a difficult and costly one, and Brigham encountered a number of financial difficulties as the resort slowly expanded. Fortunately, it grew in popularity and became a major destination for eastern skiers, eventually rivaling the major Colorado and Utah ski resorts. The village at Snowshoe, which is the iconic location we recognize as the top of the world village, was constructed in 1974 and really helped put Snowshoe on the map. With its classic alpine styling and lots of shops and restaurants, the resort quickly became a world-class skiing destination with all the amenities skiers had come to expect from the best resorts around the country. In 1990, the resort was acquired by Tokyo Tower Development Company Limited, a Tokyo-based developer of leisure resorts. Then, just five years later, the property was sold to IntraWest, a Canadian ski resort specialist which helped grow the resort, expanding the village and adding condominiums and other real estate developments. After successful expansion of the resort, with the addition of the Rimfire Lodge, the Highland House, and a highly recognizable high-speed lift, the property was acquired by Altera Mountain Company, a Denver-based hospitality company, in 2017, and they operate it to this day. Now, if you're wondering about the logo on the sign back there, well, that's a depiction of the one and only snowshoe hare, Lepus americanus, a North American species of hare that can be found in the area. But good luck trying to spot one. They're elusive and difficult to spot in the snow as their white fur allows them to blend right in. So now that we've learned a little bit about Snowshoe Mountain, Let's head into the village and check out the resort and see just how closely it matches our very own top of the world.
here just awesome. Now there's not a Raider vendor bot trapped in the ground floor, but there's plenty of fantastic things to see and do when staying at this wonderful hotel. When you exit the main entrance of the hotel, you'll come to a small flight of steps which leads you to the familiar brick pathways that go into the village, exactly as it appears in the game. In fact, notice the brickwork on the walkways. It's an exact match right down to the finest detail. Oh, and speaking of exact matches, check this out. As you walk into the village, you'll pass this little, very fallout looking work van. It's just sitting here, and it's exactly in the same place it is in the game. <laughs> it's amazing! Walking a little ways further into the village, and directly across from the Allegheny Springs, you'll come to another fantastic lodge, the Rimfire Inn. The Rimfire has spectacular views of the eastern side of the mountains, which look out onto what we know in the game as the Savage Divide, and to the south, the Cranberry Bog. The road behind me here is the road that the top of the world train station would be found if it existed in the real world, but in this case, it doesn't. In the real world, Snowshoe used to have a rail service, the Ski Train, that allowed skiers and boarders to travel by rail from DC to White Sulphur Springs, aka the White Springs Station, where a Greenbrier shuttle bus or limousine would transfer them to Snowshoe which might explain why you see the White Spring shuttle buses at other resorts in the game. The Rimfire has a great observation deck where you can look out onto the spectacular views while sipping a warm lodge drink and taking in the sun. Pretty awesome, isn't it? From here you can spot any number of in-game locations, but for me personally, it's really special, as my house in the game is right down that hill. That's right, the very spot where I decided to turn my Pops' Fallout shelter into Chipsar's Palace, a bustling casino like no other. <laughs> uh, but I digress. <laughs> to the south over there, you can see the Cranberry Glades area, or the Cranberry Bog to us wastelanders. Hey, there's some smoke over there. I really hope that's not Fisher Sight Prime coming to life. Now taking this little road just a couple blocks to the north will bring you to the awesome treetop area where you can find some great lodge condominiums to stay in that, you guessed it, match their in-game counterparts exactly and are also in the precise location that they are in the game. Oh, and bonus, no giant glowing rad roaches in the real world, <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> oh, and check this little detail out. Look at this fire pit right outside one of the treetop condominiums. It's perfect! And then, just a little further up from the treetop, you'll come right to the Snowcrest, another wonderful lodge and one with a top-of-the-world counterpart. But the real one doesn't have angry scorched or hidden turrets to greet you, just awesome rooms with lots of fantastic amenities to make your winter getaway one you'll never forget. Oh, and over on the Silver Springs side of the resort, you can find the awesome Coca-Cola Tubing Park, which makes for a fantastic day of fun for the whole family, day or night. Boy, oh boy, how did Bottle and Cappy miss this? Oh, and one more thing to point out to show you just how dedicated the game designers are to detail. As you walk around top of the world in the game, you'll notice vintage ski posters still hanging on the walls. Well, they all have their real world counterparts, and you can even find some adorning the walls of the Snowshoe Retreat as well. Check them out when you're visiting and compare them to their in-game versions for yourself. They're simply amazing. last night. Oh, it's snowing now. Oh man, morning already? Boy, I wish I could stay here for the rest of the winter. I was almost ready to tackle Shay's Revenge on my new board and run the Pioneer Scout obstacle course at the same time. Oh well, have to save that for another day. Well, I hope you all enjoyed your visit to Snowshoe, or our very own Top of the World. 
where you can ski and snowboard till you can't no more, have a great meal at a restaurant and relax by a roaring fire sipping great lodge cocktails and drinks, and spend an awesome stay at any of the world-class inns, lodges, cabins, or even campgrounds. And I have to say, staying at a lodge is a lot cooler than sleeping in a tent. Well, Coyote, it's time to head back down and continue our wild and wonderful hey! adventure. What about the bill? Um, you can send that to uh, the Pioneer Scouts of America, Order 451. Attention, Scoutmaster Treadley. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Herbert. Oh, jeepers, I gotta start a GoFundMe.